from stealing opponent sticks and breaking them, to giving the opposing player a tap on the shoulder after a goal, and a coach wasting a timeout while winning the game to an enforcer stealing a signature cell. Here are some of the craziest trolling moments in the NHL. Starting off, we got the Ottawa Senators coach wasting a timeout while his team was winning. During the 2013 Stanley Cup playoffs, the Ottawa Senators were playing the Montreal Canadiens where they combined for 132 penalty minutes. The score was 2-1 for Ottawa going into the third period when all hell broke loose. The Senators scored four goals to bring the score to 6-1. To, to sprinkle a little bit of salt into the wound directly, the Senators head coach Paul McLean pulled the ultimate trolling move. With 17 seconds left in the game, he called a timeout. Passes, and the shot floated by the goal. The Canadian's head coach could be seen mouthing, what the f is this? Gotta hand it to McLean though. He was just trying to cause a little bit of chaos in the playoffs. A coach wasting a timeout to annoy the other team was hands down hilarious. He was just goading them for a response. Speaking of goading for a response, the next guy was goaded into throwing his glove. At number two, Brad Marchand is one of the biggest rats in the NHL. And getting under the skin of opposing players is probably his biggest specialty. In this instance, one of many, by the way, during a game against the New York Rangers, he was chirping Artemi Panarin. While on the bench with the bros, he was looking across to the Rangers bench and started talking about Russia. And this upset Panarin so much that he lost his temper and threw his glove at Marchand. Panarin was then told to exit the bench and head to the locker room. And for a guy who has as much composure as Panarin does, maybe he was just a troll all along. Throwing a glove at an opposing player is a pretty funny response, but there's nothing like breaking an opponent's stick as we'll see here. At number three, the series between the Colorado Avalanche and Detroit Red Wings during the 1996 playoffs was brutal, and that's an understatement. However, there was a moment where you couldn't help but chuckle. While heading to the bench for a line change, an Avalanche player decided, hey, why not knock the stick out of the hands of this guy? He don't need it, he sucks. And this guy was not his teammate. It was Red Wings' Chris Draper who tried to reach for that stick that's on the ice and the Avalanche's Mike Ritchie just decided to push the stick away. Draper then jumped over the boards and slashed the stick out of Ritchie's hand. And then out of nowhere, Doug Brown, who was also playing for the Red Wings, was heading off for a line change as well. And he grabbed both sticks on the ice. Nicholas Cronwell then grabbed the stick, then that upset Brown because he then threw a water bottle at Cronwall. Cronwell broke the stick and tossed it onto the ice. Go play with this, how about that? This little back and forth exchange just proves that the NHL players have short tempers. The next moment showcases how fragile their egos are. At number four, Mike Roop made a living being an enforcer in the NHL. In 609 games, he managed to score 54 goals. Here's Rupp with his shot, he scores! What an answer from the New York Rangers! I repeat, in 609 games, he managed to score 54 goals. One of his goals, however, managed to draw the attention of the Philadelphia Flyers. During the 2012 Winter Classic, Roop received a pass in the slot and ripped it past the goaltender. He immediately skated towards the boards and gave a salute. The Flyers, of course, were enraged because that Sully was Yarmer Yagers. Before face-off, the Flyers huddled together and one of the players asked if they saw what Roop had just done. This is probably where they're talking about they need to do something in response. One player could even be heard saying, that's embarrassing. Now, hockey players are pretty tough but not when it comes to their egos. Instead of seeking a response for stealing a celly, maybe they should have just laughed it off like the next player. Kevin Bieska at number five had some chuckles at the expense of Vernon Fiddler. Hell, even the coach couldn't stifle a laugh. After a stoppage of play, Fiddler was skating towards the bench when he looked at Bieska and called him a caveman. He mocked Bieska doing the mean face impression. The camera then panned to Elaine Vino as he hit his laugh behind a piece of paper. When the camera panned back to Bieska, he was also laughing. At least Bieska was a good sport about it. Sometimes you don't even get a response from the opposing player. 
Coming in at number six, when a superstar meets a prospect during the preseason, sometimes you need to show them who's boss. Austin Matthews is not known for being a troll, at least most of the time. But here, during a preseason game, he decided to give Scott Subarin a little welcome to the NHL by cross-checking him a couple times after the whistle. While facing Subarin, Matthews tries to look over Subarin's shoulder to see his nameplate. Matthews tried twice, as if to let Subarin know that he's a nobody, and he can't mess with the stars. Kinda savage to make a prospect look silly. Speaking of making someone look silly, the next guy knew exactly what to do when he was in the sin bin. At number 7, we're looking at the Minnesota Wild's Stefan Veyu, who was mocking McLeod as they were serving time in the penalty box. Both players were shown tripping in the sin bin, and Veyu decided to put his pedal to the max. Veyu can be seen making fun of McLeod for missing teeth. And he does this twice, even getting McLeod to laugh at him in the process. I kind of wish they used to have these designated penalty box cameras and microphones just to capture this pure penalty box shenanigans. Penalty boxes aren't usually in the same sentences as trolling, but Ilya Kovalchuk made a point to show otherwise. At number 8, rookie Sidney Crosby faced off against Kovalchuk. They both battled and Crosby ended up taking an undisciplined penalty in the second period. Kovalchuk wanted to make Crosby pay and scored a goal on the power play. He turned towards the box and pointed at Crosby twice. Crosby was not a fan of this Sally and he voiced his concerns while leaving the box. Now, that's just one way to celebrate after scoring a goal. The next guy had a Sally that included the opposing player. At number 9, Leo Komarov wanted the opposing player to feel part of the Sally. Komarov was camping out front of the net while he waited for his teammate to sauce him the puck. And once he got it, he snuck it right past the Caps goaltender and proceeded to celebrate. The only thing is, Komarov didn't celebrate this goal with his teammate. He patted the shoulder of an opposing player and all he got in return was a shove to the face. Now that Sally didn't really come back to bite him in the butt, but the next guy, oh boy. Tapping the opposing player after a goal is a sign of disrespect. Most get away with it, but not the New York Islanders. And we can all thank Brock Nelson for number 10. During the 2019 playoffs, the Carolina Hurricanes were playing against the New York Islanders. Josh Bailey of the Islanders scored a goal and Brock Nelson wanted to thank the goaltender for letting it in. He skated towards the Hurricanes goaltender and patted him on the head. If you think the Hurricanes would forget about that, you'd be 100,000% wrong. The Hurricanes swept the Islanders and in the handshake line, Doggy Hamilton made the ultimate move. That's right, he decided to go back there and Hamilton pat Nelson on the head and say thanks for sucking so bad. And you can even see Nelson looking back at Hamilton as he kept skating. Now karma coming back to haunt you doesn't sound fun at all. And maybe next time, who knows, maybe Nelson won't touch the goaltender after the goal. The next guy at number 11 took screening the goaltender to a whole new level. He even caused a rule to be named after Sean Avery. Oh boy, y'all know where I'm going with this. He was on the New York Rangers and wanted to make some noise during the 2008 Stanley Cup playoff. While the Rangers were on the power play, he positioned himself in front of Marty Brodeur to block his vision. I know what you're thinking. Normally, players want to keep their heads back to the goaltender while they're screening him. But Avery, he decided to face Broder right to the face and began waving his arms and moving his stick in front of him. That's a 1000 IQ move if you ask me. And of course, Broder responded by punching Avery in the face with his catcher. The best part of the sequence is that Avery ended up scoring. Now they already had hatred for each other, so this, oh, this just added fuel to the fire. Avery made his career by being a bass. You either liked the guy or you hated him. No in between. Me personally, I loved him. Except for the fact that I also wasn't born then. So. For number 12, we're gonna stick to talking about Avery and being a bass. During a game against the Pens, Sean Avery purposely skated into Maxine Talbot. Talbot responded by shoving Avery and punching at Avery with his gloves on. The linesman then got in between both players and Avery mocked Talbot's action. On the way to the penalty box, Avery kept instigating because he was reenacting Talbot's attempt to try to get him with his gloves on. If that doesn't make you laugh, then I don't know what will. But I do know this. Goalies, 
are normally known for being strange creatures. And there sure ain't any exception for Dominic Hasek at number 13. Hasek did one of the best things a goaltender could do. He knew the opposing team was offside when they dumped the puck into the zone. He simply got out of their way. The goal was waved off and the faceoff was placed outside the zone. Just imagine the ref had his arm up for another reason. Like maybe he was just stretching. But overall, that was a pretty clever move for Hasek to psych out the opponents. Let us know in the comments below which of these trolling moments was your favorite and did we miss it? Click the video on the screen here to watch the most disrespectful moments in the NHL. And if you like this video, don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.